Good morning, fruit and seed people. I hope you guys are doing well. I am happy to be here. Yes, it's me, Lacey, and yes, my hair is shorter. <laughs> Let me tag something in here. There it is. All right. <clears throat> Fix your gaze. Let's fix your gaze. It's time to fix our gaze, okay? Good morning, Miss Yvonne. It is time to fix our gaze. It's time to lock in with our focus in a new way. Can you say a new way? It is time to lock in our gaze. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. I hope you are ready this Monday morning. First of all, we give God thanks and we give him praise, okay? Because it is incredible to be here it's an honor it's a blessing that he has given us new grace and new mercy thank you you had to get a shave down it was it was getting to be quite much up there good morning sister sunny i hope you're doing good you was looking cute yesterday hey looking cute yesterday hey i seen you your lipstick was popping hey you look great just to tell you that my boo my friend it is time to fix our gaze okay so um it is september the 9th of course we are coming up on a very sad anniversary called 9 11 and so it's it's just one of those horrific the one of the most horrific things that have happened in our country of course so we're definitely going to be uh, just praying for those guys uh, who lost family members and just our country as a whole um, during this season. And I wanted to focus in, get the pun, I wanted to focus in on something new. So we've, we're, we've dumped the summer slump, you know, we still have a few days as a matter of fact left in summer actually calendar wise summer does not officially end good morning miss sherry until the 23rd is the first day of fall i think if i'm not mistaken i believe the 23rd is the first official day of fall so we still got a few days left to really begin to regain our focus and so my focus scripture bam 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 is going to be Proverbs 24, oh, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. So, and this is the amplified version that I have posted here uh, in the group. So you guys can look over that sometime this week. For me, it's very important to everything that I do and everything that I say, especially in any arena, you know, that is backed up with the word, that, that, because the word is the foundation for my life, for what I do. So give me some hearts, give me some amens if that is your life too. It ain't everybody's and I ain't mad at everybody either. I'm just talking about my life because I know that it's only because of the grace of God and him being my Lord and my Savior that I am here. You may be in a different place in your relationship with him. It is what it is, but I'm just telling you where fruit and seed is, the kind of seeds I sow. And just what my heart desire is for this page in my groups, in my life too, and, and y'all life too. So at any rate, talking about focus now, focus is everything. Focus is everything. Nothing can get done without focus. Remember, when you see me pop on, have something handy dandy to write with, because I do. Because I, I, this stuff I need to remember too. Nothing can get done without focus. So that's going to be my first little nugget right there. Nothing can get done. You can do nothing without focus. And nothing can get done without focus. That's how I leave it. Let's see. Nothing can get done without focus. So nothing can get done without focus. We're going to have to be intentional about our focus. And your focus intensifies your results. So no matter what it is we're going after, our goal, 
No matter what it is, it's going to be that focus that's going to intensify the results. But I found out my lack of focus delays results. All right, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> the lack of focus delays results. The lack of focus delays results. Now, I'm talking about things we can control. Okay, Miss Carrie, good morning. The things that we have a say-so over. I was uh, did a chat in my uh, my private group yesterday. I'm going to turn on the fan so you hear the rumbling. That's what it is. Did a chat in um, a smaller group uh, yesterday, and um, we know that there are just some things, some DNA stuff that happens in us, okay? Stuff that we have no control over. But the things that God has given us, the responsibility. Told you I was awake around the same time as you. Thank you, Miss Carrie. The things that we've been given the responsibility to have authority over, we have a say-so in. We have a say-so in our appetite. Now, appetite is different from hunger. Hunger is the natural response that happens in our bodies when we are in need of nutrition. When, when, when our tummy is empty, the blood sugar drops, and the growl starts. Okay? We have nothing to do with that. That is hunger. That's natural. It should happen in every person. But I know for me, trying to bunny trail, for me, hunger didn't happen because I never allowed myself to get hungry. I just ate nonstop. And as a matter of fact, in the diet industry, that is what's recommended. But every animal on earth responds to hunger and fullness, except for us. We're the only one that has the ability to eat nonstop. But we can train our animals to eat nonstop. I mean, how is it that we have pets that are overweight? <laughs> Pets that are obese. And get this, as a result of pet obesity, they have a lot of human diseases that they should not have. Okay? All right, so get back on track, Lacey. Bam. So focus intensifies results over the things that we have a say-so over. Now, I'm not talking about the spirit of delay, which is demonic, but we're talking about our eating habits. I know for me, the summer slump got me. It got me. This was my first time, like I explained yesterday, this was actually my first time ever that I can really say that I slowed down enough to really experience what the summer slump was all about. The lag, the, the lackadaisical, it's so high that I don't feel like planning my meals. I just want to go off the rail, so to say. But... It was my first time really allowing myself to experience it. In years past, it would just happen, and it was just a part of life, you know? It was no big deal. You had the picnics, the outings, the family reunions, and you were just out everywhere doing everything, eating everything, without a conscious awareness of what was going on. But this was the first time ever that I allowed myself to be consciously aware of the summer slump. In this season, this new season that we're just walking into, listen, I would say, I'm thinking on my way here, that we have two months to lock in a different kind of focus. So I want you guys to be on this ride with me so we can lock in this focus because gluttomania season is coming. So we have September, October, okay? Gluttomania is coming the beginning of November. Because the beginning of November, we're going to get hit with the Christmas season onslaught of commercials. As a matter of fact, they're going to start, well, yeah, yeah, they're going to start right after, or no, they're going to start even before Halloween, as a matter of fact. We don't, I don't celebrate Halloween, we don't celebrate Halloween, but even then, all the candies are going to be out, and then bam, they're going to go right into the Christmas season. Some places 
are going into that right now. Says so every event has to do with food. Yep, every event has to do with food. So this is my suggestion, Miss Carrot. Since that is true, we have to end our own mind, end all of this right here. Our focus space have to make sure that that event is not about food for us. And I'll be in that talk about that during the it's the holidays baby chat but anyway miss monique good morning so our focus is going to intensify our results so now we have the opportunity since things have slowed down a little bit kids are back in school it's getting darker earlier i know here in michigan it is it's still dark now it's on it's 6 30 and it's pitch black when what a month or so ago it was bright dyke bright light, bright light day outside. Anyway, now, get this, now we're going to have times, not of isolation, what's the word that I said a while ago? Times where we are more still. Good morning. Times when we're more still. It's getting darker where I am, so I'm not going to be able to walk at 7, 8 o'clock at night. Why? It's going to be dark. So what? I'm going to be in the house. So guess what? Because there's going to be times of stillness, more times of stillness in your life, there's going to be times to focus on where you really are. And that's where the wake-up call comes in at, from the summer slump. The stepping on the scale, right? The putting on the outfit that you were able to wear and look all fly in and you put it on and you like, why is this button so tight? <laughs> What's wrong up in this mug? Why why is my pants tight? Mm -hmm. We all know. Let me remind you that the number is for information only. Okay? The number on the scale is for information. Whoever needs to type that out, type it out so you can remember. The number on the scale is for information, not identification. We cannot allow our focus to misinterpret the number. Put, the, put it this way. We cannot allow a distorted focus to misinterpret the numbers anymore. Because in times past, I know for me, the numbers meant identification. The number identified. The number made me feel bad. The number made me feel condemned. The number talked to me because of my distorted focus. <laughs> distorted focus can cause you to misinterpret the number. I forget that you have a ruined wire on the sleeve. I had the sleeve uh, two years ago. Yeah, a little bit over two years ago. I had the sleeve. But the numbers on the scale because of a distorted focus can cause you to misinterpret the numbers and you can look at the number as identification and not information the number is for information but get this we have a right we have the authority we have the responsibility to change the information all right I'm clapping right there. Give me a heart. Somebody give me a heart. I'm going to turn my fan off. Good morning, Pastor Lisa. We have a right and the authority to change the information. The information changes based on our focus. I'm going I'm to type that out. That's good. I, the information. Information called for scale. Okay. The information. I'll put scale changes based on my focus. You got to make this thing, you got to internalize this thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Monique, for saying that. I'm not a fan of the numbers. I became obsessed with it, so I stopped weighing myself. Now, this is the thing. I would... Okay, well, stop weighing so frequently. Thank you for that, because I was going to say, now the numbers can't make us afraid either. 
So we still we're still gonna have to face it because remember, just like what you said, Miss Monique, it was a place of obsession for us. But the denying ourselves from Wayne could be a place of obsession too, because now we're still afraid of the number. So it's like facing it, knowing that it doesn't identify us. Facing it, knowing that it's going to give us a calculation, okay? It's going to give us a calculation. It's like our bank account. All right. Yeah, I, I need a budget. Budget better. But it's like our bank account. It says what it says. It's not good or bad. It's a number. It's information. So, good morning, Miss Carol. So, we have to look at those numbers differently. But a distorted focus will misinterpret the number. A distorted focus will tell us that that number is our identification. And based on man's standards and rules, okay, based on man's standards and rules of what is appropriate and inappropriate, we can feel bad, good, or indifferent. I choose to look at it as information with the understanding that I get to change it. Thank you, Pastor Lisa. I wait when I remember. I go buy clothes, Fitty. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Miss Carol. So we get to change it. All right, let me get to this focus scripture right quick. Because I just want to drop y'all off something good so we can have a new focus. Remember, focus intensifies results so the question is how bad do you want it number one and number two how fast do you want to get there and i'm not talking about the day after tomorrow <laughs> because our focus is going to be different and still we're not focusing in on the numbers we're talking about peace we're talking about resolve we're talking about waking up without the chaos okay proverbs to, i don't know why why i want to say 24 Proverbs 4. Maybe I need to go to Proverbs 24 today. Proverbs 4, verses 25 and 26. This is the Amplified Version. It says, let your eyes look right on. Listen with fixed purpose. And let your gaze be straight before you. Consider well the path of your feet. And let your way. Oh, that's good. Let your ways be established in order of right. Let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose. What is the purpose? What is the goal? A lot of the times we, we are not able to focus because we don't have a goal in mind. I'm going to clap by myself. What is it that you actually want to do? What is your fixed purpose? What is your fixed goal? What is the thing that you refuse to budge on? What are the things you say, but it has to be realistic. You know, make sure it's realistic. Talk to your daddy in heaven and ask him what is realistic for you. For me to say, I want to weigh 120 pounds is absolutely unrealistic. <laughs> it's unrealistic for me. What's realistic for you? It's personal. Okay? It is personal. What is your fixed purpose? What is your fixed goal? Where are you the optimum of health? Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. What's the optimum? Be realistic with your focus. Thank you. Be realistic. Be realistic. Miss Carrie doing some awesome stuff, running a half marathon in March. That's realistic. You can train for that now. I'm not saying I'm gonna run a half marathon tomorrow. No, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a hospital stay, if that be the case. I'm gonna be realistic. Thank you for putting down some realistic goals. Be realistic with your focus, and then you have to fix your gaze. All right, how do you fix your gaze? You fix your gaze by keeping your mind stayed on the Lord, number one, because he said he was going to keep us in perfect peace, right? But we have to keep our mind stayed on him, fixed on him. How do we do that? We keep running to him with everything. Circumstances happen. Issues happen. But we got to keep running to him so that he can keep us in peace. 
one of the things I do, of course, is exercise. Exercise is medicine for my mind. I'm going to say that again. Exercise is medicine for my mind. So I have to keep my mind focused intentionally on what it is that I need to do so my intent and my heart can be right. Okay, consider well your the path of your feet and let your ways be established in order to arrive. Planning is focus. Plan your day. Plan your meal. We cannot go about willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. Do anybody even say that anymore? We cannot go without a plan. We have to plan our day. We have to plan our meal. We have to strategize and say, okay, God, what is it that needs to be in place? There are things that automatically need to be in place. And then there are things that we need to step back and say, what is it that I need to put in place for this season, for this time, to make sure that my eyes stay fixed on you. Getting up early, praying, getting in the word, getting God's strategy for the day, planning your meals. If you don't plan to eat it, don't eat it. If it's not in the plan, you can't have it. If you want something sweet, plan it. Put it in, put it in the plan so that you'll be within your boundaries, okay? Keep your eyes fixed. Keep your gaze fixed. Stay focused. And your focus will intensify your results. Okay? That's what I wanted to tell you guys today. I ain't giving it all away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. No. I'm not giving it all away today. Because I want to make sure that I, I focus and map this out just right. So the focus scripture for a little while is going to be Proverbs 4 verses 25 and 26 about locking in and fixing our gaze with a purpose. Good morning, Pastor Faye. Good to see you. Fix your gaze. Get your purpose. Okay. Thank you, Miss Carrie. If it's not planned, we don't eat it. Get your eating cutoff time together. Mine is 7 o'clock. I would recommend not going beyond 8 o'clock. Okay, you do so because your body needs a few hours to rest before you go to sleep, before you lay down. It takes four hours to digest a meal. We don't want to eat late because if we do, our bodies will still be working while we're trying to sleep. That's a lot of reason why you can go to bed tired and wake up tired. Okay, that's all I wanted to give you guys today. Have a great day. Watch this and replay. Take notes. And um, I'll be back soon, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. But anyway, you have a great day. Plan, 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 and fix your gaze because your focus will intensify your results. My name is Lacey. I got some fruit. Now, what you, I, I open it up, okay? I'm giving you some seed. Now, what you do with it is completely up to you. But I tell you the truth, your focus will intensify your results, okay? You have a great day. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.